And as it happened, John Hayes Hammond was at that program and heard me, met me afterwards and invited me to come to Gloucester, Massachusetts, which was a place at that time I'd never even heard of. But I was so intrigued by the sounds of the pipe organ that he was telling me about that he had in his home, which he didn't tell me very much about, but I got the feeling had quite a mystique about it, that I talked my parents into a trip that summer. And I walked in these halls for the first time at that tender age and first found the glorious pipe organ here perched high on a loft in the side wall of the Great Hall. And did you envision this organ to be as grand as it turned out to be? At that particular time, the largest thing in an organ that I had encountered was a local organ in our Baptist church in Lumberton, North Carolina. And I just had no scope of what this could be. Of course, the organ at Duke Chapel was a huge instrument that I had just encountered that weekend, but I still had no idea that someone could actually have a pipe organ this size in a residence. Of course, I wasn't exactly ready for a residence like this either. I understand that the original console had some tab stops with Dr. Hammond's initials on them. Tell us about those. Well, that means basically the stop tablets were his own creation. These were special favorite things of his, and some of these were sounds that he actually developed by co making combinations of different sounds that were already in existence. Pretty impressive. So. Which of his inventions and innovations that Dr. Hammond made are still in use today on pipe organs? Well, of course, many of the mechanical features that we have on modern pipe organs are directly related to him, and many of the compositions that we have, for instance, the Fantasy in F-sharp that I won the International Composers Competition with, was a direct result of my contact at an early age with this pipe organ and his inventive personality.